Hello, my name is Daniel Lee. I'm a historian of the Second World War at Queen Mary University of London. And today it is my pleasure to tell you a little bit about my new book, The SS Officer's Armchair, which will be coming out in May with Jonathan Cape. Um, the reason I wrote this book is because somebody came to me not so long ago with a bundle of documents, Nazi era documents covered in swastikas, all belonging to one person called Robert Griesinger. And all of these documents had been discovered sewn into a cushion in an armchair in this person's bedroom. And they'd had this chair for almost 50 years. They didn't recognize Robert Griesinger. And they just came to me and sort of said, who is this person? And how did his documents end up hidden inside my armchair? So that's how my interest in Griesinger began. And very quickly, I discovered from going to the archives that he was in the SS during the 1930s. He joined up in 33. He worked at the Gestapo. And he spent the Second World War in Nazi-occupied Prague, which is where he died in 1945. But getting beyond some of the more technical, bureaucratic documents, what I try to do in this book is really show what it was like for him as a person to navigate the 1930s and 1940s as a, a Nazi. And so to do that, what I, what I needed to do was talk to people who knew him, talk to, try and find out relatives who could tell me a little bit more about his past. This was very hard. There was nothing about him whatsoever online um, or in any books or anything. He was clearly not a big name in the Nazi party. So eventually what I needed to do was pick up the local phone book in Stuttgart, which is where he was born, and just go through and cold call people person after person until eventually somebody said, well, yes, that was my uncle. Um, that led to me meeting all other um, relatives of Griesinger. I was able to meet his daughters. And what I really found fascinating from talking to them, and this is what I write about in the book, is what it was like for them growing up after the Second World War in this total silence where they weren't allowed to ask questions about their father, any sort of, there were these evasion tactics which were constantly in place. They didn't know anything about what their father had done and it came, you know, me, uh, 70 years after the events, coming to them and sort of explaining to them some of uh, the actions that their father had decided to take during the war. I think one of the most interesting things in this book is that uh, as, as soon as I start to pull away some, pull at some of threads, what we see is, is this idea that we have of the Nazis, but we, we really think we know so much about um, the Nazi period, a lot of this just suddenly falls away. Um, Griesinger, for example, was not as German as we like to think of most Nazis. When I went to his house in Stuttgart that he had grown up in, we, I, I saw immediately these columns uh, from uh, outside the house, which from looking at the floor designs had actually been based on Louisiana in the 1870s. And it turned out that Griesinger's father actually was born in Louisiana. And he came from a very long line of people who um, owned enslaved people. Griesinger inherited a lot of his ideas from the American South, from Louisiana, a lot of his tastes, his ideas about furniture, ideas about race and racial thinking. I write this book in such a way that it is very much a detective story, a historical detective story. I'm constantly asking new questions about what it meant to be young, ambitious, full of energy during the Third Reich. And one of the most poignant moments for me um, as I write, uh, as I research this quest, is when Griesinger is part of the army invading the USSR in June 1941. And my family's Stettel, the village that my family escaped from when they came to Britain at the beginning of the 20th century, Griesinger finds himself there in June, July 1941. And so it's really this, this, this very interesting moment for me, this, this, this revelation that all of a sudden the person that I was working on, that I was researching, actually came into contact with family members who actually had to stay behind uh, in Ukraine and were never heard from again. So it's been a real uh, fascinating uh, project. I've, I've enjoyed every minute working on it, every twist and turn that's, that's come with uh, this story. And I hope that you do too.